A little while ago, I was watching some videos on YouTube, and I came across a Jewish rabbi by the name of Mordecai Kraft. And uh, he definitely had some interesting things um, about Hebrew and, and the Hebrew language, and, and uh, just very fascinating. And I saw a couple of his videos and, and uh, did a really good job. But he said something that I need to correct. And that is that the New Testament only has one prophecy and that that prophecy was not even true. And uh, I hate to tell you, but that's not that shows uh, quite a bit of ignorance on Rabbi Mordecai Kraft's part. I'm going to show you today a very serious warning for any Jew out there. Um, this book here in my hand is a Jewish book. Okay, I'm a Gentile. I am of German descent. But the fact of the matter is, I have been born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you say, well then you hate Jews. No, I'm not a Catholic. See, the mistake that a lot of Jews make is they associate Catholicism with true Bible-believing Christianity. Catholicism is not uh, Bible-believing Christianity, never has been. Uh, they've killed just as many Christians as they have Jews down through the centuries. Adolf Hitler was a Roman Catholic. Okay, One of the greatest persecutors and murderers of Jews out there. The Crusaders were Roman Catholics. All right, Islam comes from Roman Catholicism. So you see, I'm not your enemy. All right, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I love Israel and I support Israel. That's why I want to make this video. Because there is a man in your Old Testament who, in type, actually, this whole book is prophecy that's confirmed by the New Testament. The New Testament that Jews reject, right now, anyhow. And I want to show you in this study that there are multiple prophecies in the New Testament that are actually confirmations of what the book of Job is saying. You know, there are many people that say that the book of Job was the first one that was written, is the oldest book. Now, it doesn't have the oldest events in it, that would be Genesis, but the fact is, there are things all throughout the book of Job that are prophecies of the future. You might not even be aware of these. But I'm going to show you what's going to happen to the nation of Israel. All right? right now, you can see in the news that there are a lot of people that are lined up against the nation of Israel and against the Jewish people. There's never been a shortage of people that hate the Jews. And unfortunately, a lot of those are professing Christians. But you see, if you study, if you actually study the issue, you'll see that there's a big difference between a professing Christian and a possessing Christian. A real, truly saved Christian will not be against the Jewish people. Right? They will defend the Jews. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. But I need to warn you about what's coming. Now, I've put together a series of videos called Pre-Trib Rapture Moments. And in the 18th one, I talk about the order of the books in the King James Bible and how they actually line up with what is coming in the future. Uh, you don't have this in your in your uh, Hebrew Old Testament if you are an Orthodox Jew. The order of books are different than those that appear in the King James Bible. But I want to show you the interesting thing here about this. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. That's the order of those books in the King James Bible. Now, the interesting thing about it is it actually is prophecy for what has been happening and what is going to happen in the future. Ezra, you have the Jews returning to the land of Israel. Nehemiah, you have the uh, Jews rebuild the city. Esther, the king puts away his Gentile wife and takes a Jewish wife. You see, right now, I'm a member of the Bride of Christ. All right, The church of Jesus Christ, and not the Latter-day Saints either, not the Mormons, they're a satanic cult. Um, the true church is likened to a bride in your New Testament. And that true church is very evil and very wicked right now. People that are professing Christians are doing things that even 50 years ago no Christian would have done. The church is in apostasy, in other words. That's what the Bible prophesies would happen. And that, there with the uh, the wife, oh, I can't even think of her name now, in the book of Esther, but uh, the wife that, uh, she was very, very wicked, and the king put her away. And what did he do? He took a Jewish bride, Esther, Queen Esther. And you see, that's what's happening right now. The king 
the Lord Jesus Christ is about ready to put away his Gentile bride. He's about ready to remove the Gentile bride and say, you're wicked, you're leaving. So that Jewish bride now is on the stage to become the wife again of the Lord God. Right, so we're going to see that probably not too far off into the future. Next you have the book of Job. Job is a picture of a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble being found in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. You can read about that. Okay, what's the name of the uh, help here? Vashti. Vashti the queen. Okay, thank you. Um, Vashti the queen was the one who was a Gentile bride. The king put her away and took a Jewish bride. All right. Now what happens after Job? We're going to be talking about the book of Job today. Psalms. In the book of Psalms, the king returns. Okay, the king is there, just like in the Bible, the New Testament, there's a prophecy, and in fact, in the Old Testament too, in the Minor Prophets there, you'll even see this thing about a king returning. All right, the Lord is going to set up his kingdom on the earth with Jerusalem as the capital city. The book of Proverbs, the king teaches and brings wisdom. Again, prophetic uh, thing there. Ecclesiastes, the kingdom on earth ends. All right, The end of the millennial kingdom there, Satan is loosed out of the bottomless pit, goes out to deceive the nations. God pours down fire on them from heaven. The earth is devoured with the fire. And you have the great white throne judgment. So, very interesting that the order of the books in the King James Bible lines up with what is coming here in the future. What's already happened and what is happening currently and what is coming, I should say. Now we're going to go to Job chapter 1. We're going to see some very interesting things here. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. There was a man in the, in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she-asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. All right, Job is a very wealthy man. Interesting because many Jews are also extremely wealthy right now. Matter of fact, I looked it up. There was a Forbes magazine article, and they had the 100 richest men in the world. 24 of them were Jews. Nearly a quarter of the richest men in the world are Jewish. Huh, interesting. And it was interesting, too, because the Rothschild family was not in the list. And the Rothschilds are incredibly wealthy. They're not billionaires. They're probably you know up into the trillions of dollars that they have. You know, so, you know, I don't even think that the, the list was even accurate. I think that there's far more than just 24 Jews that are very, very wealthy, up into the 100 wealthiest men on the planet. But you see, Job was very wealthy. Now what happened? Well, go to verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave 
and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Are you going to do that? If you're a Jew and you lose everything? You go from being very, very wealthy to all of a sudden everything's taken away from you? It's going to be rough. Now look at uh, chapter 2. We're going to see later on that that is what's going to happen to the Jewish people, by the way, in the future. Job chapter 2, verse 7. So went Satan forth uh, from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What, shall we, shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So first, the devil takes away, he had to get God's permission first, by the way, interesting. But first he takes away Job's wealth, and his family, his children. Then he comes and gets Job's health and turns his wife against it. Hmm. Pretty rough stuff. You're going to see the tie-in to Bible prophecy here, prophecy here as we continue. Job chapter 2, verse 13. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Now, in the book of Daniel, it talks about Daniel's 70th week, and that this time period, if you study it out, is basically a seven-year time period that's coming. And there's a lot of things that are going to happen, and halfway into that thing, in the midst of that week, three and a half years, you have this man that's going to be ruling things, the Antichrist, is going to cause the sacrifice and ablation to cease. There will be a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. That thing is already being prepared. If you're Jewish, you know about that. Okay? Uh, I study it. You know, other Christians I know study it. We're very interested to see this thing happening. We're not at all against it. All right? But what we see is Bible prophecy is going to be fulfilled. And Job is on the ground for seven days and seven nights. In type, showing, it's just like a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble, that's on the ground, so to speak, for seven years. It's going to be a very, very rough time. And if you're watching this sermon, there's still time for you to get saved before this thing happens. All right? And I realize, you know, if you're still with me, you know, if you're open-minded enough to watch me speak, well then, you know, there's a lot of pressure on a Jew, I realize that, with family and relatives and everything else, to get saved. I know that. I know it costs you a lot more than it costs somebody like me to get saved. But it's important that you understand that the New Testament lines up perfectly with the Old Testament. All right? It's not some book that was written by wicked Gentiles. This whole book was written by Jews. All right? But we'll continue. And by the way, the test of Scripture is not whether it makes you feel good or whether you agree with it. The test of Scripture is prophecy. If this book is eternal, if this book is written by the, the great I Am, you know, the, the Lord said about I am that I am, you know, if this book is written by an eternal God, then it should not be confined to a certain time period. It should be able to reach out into the future and tell you what's going to happen. And this book does exactly that and lines up. The last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation, lines up perfectly with the book of Job. And we're going to see that as we continue. But now let's look at uh, chapter 3, verse 12 says here, Why do the knees prevent me, or the why the breasts that I should suck? In other words, he's regretting being born. But now let's look at something very interesting here, a New Testament tie-in. Keep your hand there in Job chapter 3, but turn to your New Testament. And you can look this up online if you're, if you're an Orthodox Jew or Jewish and you don't have a New Testament. You can actually look this up, BibleGateway.com. Use the King James Version, none of the others. And, uh, but you can see here, Matthew chapter 24, verse 19 says, And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Hmm. So you see there a warning 
to people that have small children. You go back to Job there, in verse 12, it says, Why did the knees prevent me, or why the breasts that I should suck? Very similar thing going on there. All right? He, as an adult, as an older man, is saying, Why on earth was I born? But even more so, is this going to be true in the New Testament tie in there, in the time of Jacob's trouble, that women that, are, that have small children, it's going to be very, very rough on them, rough on the children. Now go to Job 3, verse 14. With kings and counselors of the earth which built desolate places for themselves. Hmm. Kings and counselors of the earth building desolate places for themselves. Is there a New Testament tie-in? Well, keep your hand there in Job and go to Revelation chapter 6. Now see that this Bible is an amazing, amazing book. Revelation chapter 6, we're going to read here from verses 15 through 17. It says, And the kings of the earth, remember it said kings and counselors, and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Go back to Job. So you see there, right now, they're already building desolate places. You know, they're building shelters and underground cities and bunkers and all kinds of stuff in places that are would be considered desolate, like out in the wilderness. And back in the book of Revelation, you see why they're building it. Why? Because they have to run to get away from Jesus Christ coming back. It's really kind of foolish to think that they can get away from the being that the Bible calls God, who fills all in all. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God's omnipresent. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to hide from the Lord? All right, You can't hide from the Lord. But that's not the way that rich men think. They think that they can actually escape Almighty God. No, they can't. And you can't either if you're lost. God will find you out. Alright? Um, look at Job chapter 3, verse 15. It says here, Or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Hmm. Go to the book of James. Keep your hand there in Job. Go to the book of James in the New Testament. James chapter 1, verse 1. We'll start there. just want to show you who this is being addressed to. James 1, 1 says, a James, excuse me, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Who is James writing to? He's not writing to Gentiles. He's writing to Jews. The twelve tribes. When do the twelve tribes show up again, according to the New Testament? In the book of Revelation chapter 7. All right. Interesting. But now look at uh, verse, or chapter 5, James chapter 5. I'm going to show you this thing about stocking up on gold and silver. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. It says here, Go to now, ye rich men, remember like Job, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped together treasure for the last, or ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Hmm. Very interesting. Kind of like the uh, 24 Jews right now that are in the top 100. Oh, and by the way, there was one Jew that uh, didn't make the list there. I forgot to mention him. His name is uh, Dustin Muscovitz. He's 28 years old and he's a billionaire. Billionaire with a B. I'm not saying millionaire. Billionaire. He's a rich Jew. Kind of like Job would have been. And Job lost everything just like that. You know, the Bible talks in 1 Timothy chapter 6 about not putting your faith and your trust in uncertain riches. That's all this world has to offer. 
There's nothing on this world that is certain riches. Everything's uncertain riches. Gold and silver can be taken from you. Your money can be taken from you. Stock market crash, banker holiday, you know, whatever. They can take it from you. Even your land. If you have land, you don't pay your taxes. They come and take your land. There's nothing on this earth that is certain riches. Except for salvation. That's the only thing that you can't lose. If you're saved right now. Now in the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming, you can lose your salvation if you take the mark of the beast. Well, let's continue. Go back to the book of Job. Job chapter 3, verse 20. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than for hid treasure, which rejoice exceedingly, and are glad when they can find the grave. Hmm. Sounds like these people aren't too happy with life. Keep your hand there. Go back to the book. Excuse me. Go back to the book of Revelation, chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. Now this is something that has not happened yet. This is not uh, poetry about the first century when the Romans took over and uh, you know Titus came in and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. This hasn't happened yet. Romans chapter 9 verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Why? Well, because if you read the context there, it's because these locusts have stung them and they're in such horrible pain that they want to die. And they can't. Kind of like what Job said about there in Job 3, verses 20 through 22 that we just read. You see how the Bible is confirming itself? The New Testament lines up with the Old Testament. And unfortunately, if you're not saved, you don't have God's Holy Spirit in you to guide you into this truth. The Bible says that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You can't understand them. They're spiritually discerned. A Jew right now that does not know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, as his Messiah, if you will, that Jew, even though they're chosen, even though God has a plan for you, you're still lost. And if you die today, you will go to hell. And you can't tell me, if you're a Jew, you can't tell me that you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven. You can't say that. You really can't, don't know for sure where you're going to go when you die. You are trusting in your good works and you're thinking, I'm trying to do right, I'm trying to do good, but you don't know that you're going to heaven when you die. Why? Because you've rejected Jesus Christ. Many of you, through ignorance, you've never been taught about Jesus Christ. But that's what the purpose of this video is. Because there are some very, very bad times coming. If I could go back to Germany and warn you about Hitler before it happened so that you didn't go to the death camps, would you want to have listened to me? Would you have said, I'd like to hear from this guy? Mm -hmm. But you see, this time period that's coming is going to make Nazi Germany and the Holocaust look like a walk in the park. All right? This time period that's coming to the Jewish people is going to be the absolute worst time period that's ever happened. And the reason for it is because the majority of Jews are very, very, very wicked people, unfortunately. That's why Jacob, Israel, has this time of trouble that's coming upon them that God himself is bringing. But we'll continue here. I'll show you some of this. All right. Now look at verse 25, Job chapter 3, verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Hmm. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. The time of Jacob's trouble. See, book of Job is lining up with Jeremiah, and that lines up with the New Testament. Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, you know, and then into Revelation. And there's a lot of other passages, too. They're just incredible. Job chapter 5, verse 14. It says here, They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. 
Huh. So all the light goes out. But this just happened to Job, right? This will never happen in the future. This is not a prophecy of the future, is it? Actually, yes, it is. Keep your hand there in Job and go back to Revelation chapter 16. Anybody tells you that there's not any prophecy in the New Testament, they're just showing a high degree of ignorance. And I say that as nicely as I can. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just the truth. Revelation chapter 16, verse 11. It says here, I'm sorry, well, go to verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their, their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Is there going to come a time in the future when all the light goes out? Yes, there is. Interesting, because that's what Job had to endure back there for seven days and seven nights. He was talking about the thing of darkness. Giving prophecy of the future. The future of the Jewish people. Very interesting. Job 5, verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth, therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Keep your hand in Job. Go back to the book of Hebrews. Now, if you don't know that this is written to you, well, if you're Jewish, it is definitely written to you. A Hebrew. Job chapter 12. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Excuse me. Change my notes here. Hebrews chapter 12, we'll begin at verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art, uh, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? So, when you go into this time period, I want you to remember something. As a Jew, if you're in the time of Jacob's trouble, and you're receiving this chastening of the Lord, and you really truly love God Almighty, and you're trying to do His will, um, He's dealing with you as a son at that point. Now, if you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, you know, in that time period, then you are truly a son. If, if not, well, you better get that done, um, but, because that's going to be very important. But the fact of the matter is, that chastening that Job was enduring is the same chastening that's going to come upon the Jews in the time of, John, in the time of Jacob's trouble. Same thing that's going on there. But you see again how an old ancient book there in the Old Testament lines up perfectly with the New Testament. Back to the book of Job. Chapter 5, verse 19 through 27. It says here, He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Kind of like the seven years of the Great Tribulation. Interesting, too, because the Bible talks about the mark of the beast in this time period, and his number is six score, three hundred and, or six, six score, uh, oh boy. Six hundred and three score and six. Six hundred and three score and six, thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I... Sorry, my brain kind of froze there for a moment. Um, but yeah, 666. Interesting there. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. The six troubles there, you know, good reference to the mark of the beast that's coming. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. There will be bad things that can happen in that time period, but if you truly are a believer in the time of Jacob's trouble, God can spare you the whole way through to the end. And we'll see about that as we continue. Verse 20, In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Now, if you know the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, he talked about famine and war coming in this time. This time of great tribulation that's coming. Verse 21, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of the destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. 
Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation, and shalt not sin. Thou shalt not Thou, thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in in his season. Lo this, we have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. You're going to have to remind yourself of that as a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. That if you get through this thing, if you endure to the end, you will be saved, and then you go into the millennial kingdom, and you will inherit the earth at that point. Israel is no longer going to be this dirty little nation that everybody hates and everybody's trying to kill them and stuff. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, is going to be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem for that thousand-year period, and Israel will become the greatest nation on earth. Actually, the only nation on earth. Uh, anybody else that's left is going to have to come up to Jerusalem to worship the King every year. And the Jews aren't going to be the uh, laughing stock of the world anymore. People aren't going to mock them. Nobody's going to mock Jerusalem and the Jewish people at that point in time. But let's continue on. Job chapter 6, verse 4. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, the poison whereof drinketh up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. Hmm. The terrors of God set themselves in array against Job, but Job being a type of a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble, what are the terrors that are going to set themselves in array? Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. Three sets of seven judgments, and they are set in array. When the time of Jacob's trouble comes, a Jew can flip open the book of Revelation and look at the play-by-play. -play. They can see exactly what's going to come next. They'll understand. And by the way, in Revelation chapter 11, it talks about the two witnesses. Those two witnesses, if you study it out, are Moses and Elijah. Moses representing the, pro or the uh, law, Elijah the prophets. Those two guys are going to come back and actually preach to the Jewish people. So, if you want confirmation that the New Testament is correct, you're going to get it from Moses and Elijah, in the flesh, on the earth, preaching. And the Antichrist is going to make war with them, you know, and overcome them and, and uh, you know, behead them, and they're going to come back to life after three and a half days. But you can study that out sometime. Next, go to Job chapter 7, verse 10. This is interesting, too. It says here, He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. Now, keep your hand there, and go to Matthew 24. Again, we're going to see the New Testament tie-in here. Job being a type of a tribulation saint, a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble. And you're going to see here that Jesus Christ actually confirms what's going to happen. Matthew 24, verse 15 through 18. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, we just read about there in Job, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Back to the book of Job. Very interesting there. Verse 10 said, He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. In that time period when the Antichrist causes, the, he sets himself up in the temple, he causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and he says, I'm God, you now worship me. At that point in time, a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble has to run. Don't go back to your house and get your valuables and whatever else. Run away. Run for your life. Flee out into the mountains. That's what's going to happen. Again, see how the New Testament lines up with these prophecies in the book of Job. It's amazing. Continuing. Job 8. Job chapter 8, verse 20. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, 
neither will he help the evildoers, till he fill thy mouth with laughter and thy lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. All the rich people, all these rulers and politicians and things that hate the Jewish people right now, they're all going to come to naught. They're going to be nothing at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 25 talks about the sheep, that the, Jesus Christ, when he sets up his kingdom in Jerusalem, all people are gathered before him, all the people that survive this horrible time that's coming, they're all gathered before him and he separates them. He takes the goats and he sticks them on his left hand. He takes the sheep and he says, come into the right hand, go into the kingdom. The goats go down to hell. And there you're going to have all these big shots, all the Illuminati and CFR and all the Trilateral Commission, all these guys, you know, whatever. And there could be some wicked Jews among them, by the way. I'll just say that. Some of these guys are Jewish. Some of them are Jewish descent. And they are very, very wicked. And they are not going to believe in Jesus Christ. And they are not going to go into the Millennial Kingdom. All right. Just because you're Jewish does not gain, give you direct access to the Millennial Kingdom. All right? You're going to have to have faith in Jesus and keep the commandments there, according to Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, I believe it is. And that's going to be there. You can't take the mark. You can't be part of the Antichrist system. All right? Very important to remember that. But let's continue with the book of Job here, our study. Job chapter... 9, verse 24 and 25. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Now my days are swifter than a post. They flee away. They see no good. God gives the world into the hand of the most wicked man that's ever showed up on the planet. Again, you know, this, uh, this Antichrist man that is coming, this man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, this man is going to make Adolf Hitler look like a little schoolgirl. Okay? Hitler's nothing compared to the Antichrist, compared to what this guy's going to be like. All right? And who is it that gives him his power? God does. You say, well, if God's given my worst enemy power, what, what chance do I have? Well, you have to throw your, your life into God's hands and say, God, you take care of me. And God will. All right? Very important to get all this stuff. Job chapter 10. Job chapter 10, verse 14 through 22. If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. I want you to understand that for a minute. In the time of Jacob's trouble, if you sin by worshiping the beast and taking the mark, you are now marked. You can never have that chip removed or the QR code taken off your forehead or whatever the case is, whatever the mark of the beast becomes. And all the technology is already there. They're just waiting for the man to show up. Body Christ has to leave first before the Antichrist can show up. But when this thing happens, if you take that mark and you worship the beast, you will never be acquitted. You are found guilty. You will go to hell without any chance of survival. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 11 talks about that. Very, very important to understand that. Okay. Uh, verse 15. If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I, be, if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. I am full of confusion. Therefore see thou mine affliction, for it increaseth. Thou huntest me as a fierce lion, and again thou showest thyself marvelous on, upon me. Thou renewest thy witness against me, and increasest thine indignation upon me. Changes in war are against me. Wherefore then hast thou brought me forth out of the womb? O oh, that I had given up the ghost, and no eye had seen me. I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease then, and let, let me alone that I may take comfort a little. Before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land of darkness as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. Wait a second. Where the light is as darkness? What is that? Well, the Bible talks in the New Testament about hell being fire and brimstone. Brimstone is the Bible word for sulfur. When you burn sulfur... Admits a flame. F 
flame gives off light. But guess what the light is, the flame, what, what the color of it is when you burn sulfur? It's black or purple. The point is, the light, quote unquote light, of brimstone is darkness. And if you take the mark of the beast and worship the image in that time period that's coming, the time of Jacob's trouble, you're done. You're finished. God begins to hunt for you. And if you can survive all the plagues and all the horror and the war and the death and everything else, if you can survive it, then Jesus Christ comes back and his saints come with him, and we will hunt you down and bring you to the judgment of the nations in Matthew chapter 25. And there the Lord will see the mark and he'll say, you to the left. You say, but, 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 I, I, I want to be, you know, I want to be in the kingdom. I'm a Jew. See, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. You know, the Lord's going to say, to the left, over there with the sheep, you're going to go down to hell. If you are watching this, and you're not saved yet, or you watch this in the time of Jacob's trouble, whatever, this survives till then, you cannot take the mark of the beast. You cannot worship the image of the beast. You can't do it. If you do, you have no chance. And those verses right there are going to apply to you. God will hunt you down, and when he gets you, you're going to go to hell with no chance of escape. None. Continuing, Job... Uh, chapter 11, verse 13 through 20. It says here, If thou prepare thine heart, and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast, and shalt not fear. Interesting, because now it's giving the opposite. opposite. First you had there in Job chapter 10, you had the one that's actually taken the mark, the one that's bad and God's actually hunting for them. Now you have one that has not taken the mark. Interesting there in verse, thir or verse 15 it says, For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. The Bible says there's going to be a mark upon the forehead in Revelation chapter 20. There will be a mark upon the forehead. But this person here lifts up their face without spot. Hmm. Interesting. And by the way, there, there again, the uh, Catholics that, that people, you know, many Jews foolishly call, they call them Christians. They're not Christians. They already take a mark, a spot upon their forehead. And if you read back in the book of Leviticus, it talks about printing them, that you're not to print any marks upon you. Yeah. Don't ever take a mark. Don't ever take a tattoo. Very serious. It's what Hitler did to the Jews, by the way. Put them into the camps and put numbers on them. Don't ever take a number. Don't ever take a mark. Don't ever worship the beast. Verse 14. Let's see if I got the, Yeah, okay. No, wait. I'm not there yet. Um, verse 16. Because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away, and thine age shall be clearer than the noonday, thou shalt shine forth, thou shalt be as the morning, and thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Also thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. You're going to have to remind yourself in the time of Jacob's trouble that you have good things coming if you endure to the end. If you make it without taking the mark, if you can make it through that time period, there are amazing things coming. The millennial kingdom, the prophesied millennial kingdom, Jesus Christ returns to the earth. You will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And it's going to be a wonderful time. And you have to keep that in mind. It is worth whatever you have to go through to get into that kingdom. Now go to chapter 12, verse 23 and 25. Or 23 through 25, excuse me. Uh, it says here, He increaseth the nations and destroyeth them. He enlargeth the nations and straighteneth them again. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness there where there is no way. Remember, they go about out into the wilderness, the kings and the counselors, to, to into desolate places there, to build habitations out there. Interesting. 
Uh, they grow up in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. Again, see the tie-ins to the book of Revelation. It's right there in front of you. All right? The New Testament is the completion of the Old Testament. They're not a, some heretical book that Jews should reject. You better accept it. It's just amazing. And if uh, you want to see the thing about God building the, the kingdoms and things, go to Zephaniah. Keep your hand there in the book of Job, of course. Go to Zephaniah, chapter 3. He said, I don't believe a, a loving God would, would do a thing like bringing all the nations together. You know, I don't think a God would do that. You know, the God that I worship. Well, we'll see about that. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Hmm. That's not happened yet, but it will be in the future. Go back to the book of Job, chapter 13. I just had to throw this one in here because I think this is a great verse and very applicable to today, and of course even more so into the time of Jacob's trouble. But it says here, But ye are forgers of lies, ye are all physicians of no value. I like that one. A lot of doctors are physicians of no value. You can go to them and go to them and go to them and go to them, and they will not cure you of anything. And in the time of Jacob's trouble especially, they're going to be working for the Antichrist system, and they're going to try to get you to take the mark. Don't go to the physicians. They're of no value anyhow. So, just had to throw that in there. Uh, verse 15, chapter 13, verse 15. And I, you know, I'm not saying that anything medical is bad and evil and whatever. I'm not saying that. You can break a bone or something like that, okay. You know, we'll look at my other studies on that. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will main maintain mine own ways before him. He also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him, Hear diligently my speech and my declaration with your ears. Behold, now I have ordered my cause. I know that I shall be justified. A hypocrite in the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be somebody that says, I'm not going to take the mark, and then turns around and takes it. Because the pressure gets to be too great. And a hypocrite is not going to stand before God. You say, what's this thing about standing before God? Matthew chapter 25, the judgment of the nations. Everybody stands before God, and God separates. Goats to the left, sheep to the right. It's right there. But let's continue here. Uh, let's go to Job chapter 14, verse 7. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. Huh. Did you know that Jesus Christ prophesied that Israel would become a nation again? The fig tree he talked about in Matthew chapter 24. And he said that it would happen, and that that generation would not pass till all things be fulfilled. Hmm. Interesting because Job is saying the same thing here. That there's a tree and it's cut down like Israel was back there in the Old Testament. It was destroyed as a nation. And yet, guess what? That stump's still in the ground. And it gets a little bit of water and it starts to grow. And the branch is yet tender. Israel is still a fairly new nation compared to many other nations. But when that tree begins to grow again, the Bible says that that generation that's alive at that time will not pass away till everything is fulfilled. Hmm. Very interesting. Again, we see Job prophesying something way, way, way back, and Jesus Christ confirms it. it ties together. Very interesting. 
Now look at uh, verse 13 in Job chapter 14. But look that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret, until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time, and remember me. Again, that's going to be a prayer of a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to want to be hid by God in this time period that's coming, because it's going to be very bad. Now look at chapter 16, verse 11. God hath delivered me to the ungodly, and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. Um, this is a very interesting one. You say, what do you mean? Well, I'm going to show you something very incredible here. Revelation chapter 6. Keep your hand there in the book of Job, because we're going to be looking at two of these here. Job chapter 16, verse 11 said, God hath delivered me to the ungodly, and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. Now, this King James Bible right here that I'm holding was first written in 16... 11, the year 1611. Job chapter 1611 that we just read there. What happens in the future? Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Well, that's just a coincidence, though, you see. 1611 in the book of Job saying God turns some of the, his, the, the saints there over to be killed, executed, to be martyred. And the Bible confirms in the book of Revelation that there are going to be people that are going to be killed for the testimony of Jesus and the word of God. What's the word of God at the time? The 1611. Don't tell me that that's a coincidence. I don't believe it. That's the Holy Spirit of God confirming something that Job could not have possibly known about. And by the way, there were no chapter and verse markings there in the originals showing you that, you know, King James Bible is superior to the originals. In many, many, many ways, by the way. But we'll continue. Job chapter 18, verse 11. Job 18, verse 11 through 19. Terror shall make him afraid on every side, and shall drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger bitten, and destruction shall be ready at his side. Let me just stop there for a minute. It's interesting in verse 11 it says uh, that about terror, you know, make him afraid on every side, and shall drive him to his feet. Interesting. It doesn't say drive him to his knees to pray. Uh-uh. You're not going to pray when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. Run. <laughs> it drives you to your feet. You're sitting down watching television or something. You, he just sat in the temple and said that he's God. Oh, man. Get up and run. Drive him to his feet. Again, you see the prophecy here. It's amazing. But uh, verse 13, It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. It shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath and above. Shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. Somebody who doesn't take the mark of the beast is not going to be known by anybody. They're not going to care about you. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day, as they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him that knoweth not God. Hmm. Very interesting there again. You see a lot of tie-ins there to what's going to happen to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. All right, and interesting there it says he shall have, or he verse nineteen he shall neither have son nor nephew among his people nor any remaining in his dwellings. That's the reason a lot of Jews don't get saved today. That's a reason a lot of Gentiles don't get saved today. Why? Because they know their family would disown them. They know their family would turn against them if they got saved. I mean, really saved. I'm not just talking like cute little church going religion. I'm talking salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ. A changed life, a new creature in Christ Jesus. 
It frightens people. So what would my mother think? What would my father think? What would my friends? What would my girlfriend think? What would, what would my wife think? What would my boss, my co-workers, my aunt, my, uncle, my grandparents, what would they think? See? You better forget them, and you better start thinking about your own soul. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You better think about that. Well, let's continue. Job chapter 19, verse 19. All my inward friends abhorred me, and they whom I loved are turned against me. We're just talking about? My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity upon me, have pity upon me, O ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye persecute me as God, and are not satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were now written, O oh, that my O oh, that they were printed in a book. They are, King James Bible. They that were graven uh, with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. Or that they, excuse me. Uh, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Sorry to all the amillennial and postmillennial people out there. Um, it's premillennial. Jesus Christ is going to stand upon the earth. That doesn't mean after the thousand year kingdom to come down and see what good work people have done. He's going to stand upon the earth when he comes down in Revelation chapter 19 to set up his kingdom. And he doesn't go back up again to let us rule things down here for a thousand years. He's here on the earth. That's why people go up to the city of Jerusalem to worship the king from year to year. Continuing. Uh, verse 26, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God upon the earth. You see? See how this is a, a, a tribulation saint? A Jew that gets through the time of Jacob's trouble? They will see God in their flesh. They're going to see God upon the earth. This is prophecy that Job is speaking here. This isn't just nice, poetic, you know, nice little thing. He's speaking prophecy. Very interesting. Verse 27, Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. But ye should say, Why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. When the Jew sees Jesus, Okay, when you get through that time of Jacob's trouble and you actually see Jesus, it's going to be for judgment. And if you've taken the mark, if you have worshipped the beast, you're not going to be doing too good in that judgment. But if you've endured to the end and you've had faith in Jesus, okay, and you refuse to take the mark and you fled out into the wilderness and whatever, at that point in time, that judgment is going to come and... There's a good chance, if, you know, if you're if you're feeding the poor and you know everything there in Matthew chapter 25, visiting the homeless and the sick and people in prison and things. If you're doing that, you're going to go into the millennial kingdom. It's going to be a blessed time for you. Again, it's prophecy. This is prophecy here in the book of Job. He's not just speaking poetically because he's hurting and whatever else. It's prophecy that he's speaking. Very interesting study. Uh, chapter 20, verse 4. There's a couple more places to turn to here. Chapter 20, verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? Again, another very interesting passage of Scripture there. The triumphing of the wicked is but for a moment. All this New World Order stuff that comes in and the Illuminati and all these other things, you say, boy, they're going to have control over the whole world for seven measly years. And then Jesus Christ comes down, puts an end to it, and sets up His kingdom for 1,000 years. 
Ooh, wow, whoop de doo seven-year kingdom. Wow, boy, you guys really did a good job. You know, it took you hundreds of years to build this stupid New World Order, and in just seven years it falls apart. And who's going to care? Got somebody in the time, in the Millennial Kingdom say, uh, what do you think of David Rockefeller? Who? Uh, Nathan Rothschild? Huh? Who's that? Nobody's going to care. Job chapter 25. Job 25 verses 2 through 3. It says here, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies? And upon whom doth not his light arise? Um, is Jesus Christ coming back with armies? Mm -hmm. Read Revelation chapter 19. Jesus Christ comes back with armies. You can read that in your own time sometime. Okay? And if you're saved today before the rapture, you're going to be part of the army. Sorry, no pacifists. Uh, Job chapter 27. Job chapter 27, verse 8. For what is the hope of a hypocrite, though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul? Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he call always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God, that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A, a tempest stealeth him away in the night. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, back in the book of Hebrews, it talks about taking patiently the spoiling of your goods. What's going to happen to you as a Jew at the time, at the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble? You're going to be just like Job. You're going to be very wealthy. Everything's going to be going great. And all of a sudden, boom, everything's taken away from you. And you'll probably be sitting up on a hillside someplace looking down at your house watching the soldiers taking out your goods. The spoiling of your goods. You're going to be watching a foreign army coming in and taking everything that was yours. Stealing it from you. But guess what? If you endure to the end to be saved, you're going to get to do the same thing. You're going to get to divide the silver. I mean, what do you think is going to happen to these rich men with all their mansions and lands and everything else at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble? I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be divided. We're not going to just say, I just put, you know, bury the silver and the gold there, it's going to be divided for the people that make it through, that endure to the end to be saved. Interesting. Job chapter 28, verse 28. Now this one is a one of these verses that crosses all dispensational lines. This thing is true no matter when you live, Old Testament under the law, you know, before the law, under the law, you know, any time. Today, time of Jacob's trouble, millennial kingdom, any time this one's good. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Very, very, very important. That's true biblical knowledge right there. Fearing God and departing from evil. We'll do very well if you keep that as a very important verse. Now go to Job chapter 34. Job 34, verse 21. Okay, it says here, For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. Uh, he shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overcometh them in the night, so that they are destroyed. 
He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others, because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways. Again, the contrast between saved people in the time of Jacob's trouble and lost people. Those that fear God, those that say, I will not go along with this system, I will not take the mark, I will not worship the beast, I will run away from this whole system, this corrupt system. Those people there get to go into the millennial kingdom. Those people that go along with the world system will go into the lake of fire, into hell. Very important that you understand that. Next we're going to go to Job 40. Job chapter 40, verse 9. Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? By the way, a thundering voice is what is going to start this time. All right? I can't say exactly start it, you know, because there could be a little bit of an interim there between the time of the rapture and the time of you know, when the Antichrist sets up, you know, makes the peace treaty there and things. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that when the rapture happens, if you're lost, you're going to hear God's voice sound like thunder. All right? uh, to the saved, it's like a trumpet. To the lost, it's like thunder. So there's going to be a huge, probably sound like an explosion going off, like you've never heard before, and the body of Christ leaves. That begins the time. So again, if this has not happened yet, you still have a chance to get saved. All right. If it has happened, if you remember that explosion, and you remember all the chaos when a bunch of people disappeared, well, there's going to be still a lot of you know, Christians, you know, quote-unquote Christians left on the earth. The Pope will still be here, and Rick Warren, and a bunch of those other you know, wicked people. There's going to be a lot of them, but they weren't truly saved. Okay, But let's continue here. Verse 10, Deck thyself down with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold, every one that is proud, and abase him. The Lord's certainly going to be doing that. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Okay? In other words, in that time period, your... If you can do all the things that God's doing, then you can save yourself. What's the point? You can't do what God is doing in that time period. Therefore, the only one that can save you is God himself. You put, better put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he is God. Job 41, verse 1. Canst thou dry out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Now, Leviathan, in the King James Bible, is a type of Satan. Okay, there are many types in the Bible, and Leviathan is definitely a type of Satan. You say, how do you know? Let's keep reading. Look at verse 9 in Job chapter 41. And this is very interesting here. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not, be, shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? You say, wait a second, you said earlier that people are going to see God upon the earth. Yes, that's correct. But guess what? You see Satan first. You see, Satan counterfeits everything that the Lord does. The Lord comes back upon a white horse. Satan, as the Antichrist, you know, Satan, you know, the Antichrist is basically Satan manifest in the flesh. And Satan comes on a white horse. So you're actually going to see Satan in the flesh before you see God in the flesh. Very interesting. Look at uh, verse 31 there in Job chapter 41. Uh, it says here, He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Hmm. You say, well, how does that tie into the New Testament? Well, keep your hand there in the book of Job, but go back to Revelation chapter 13, the chapter about the Antichrist, the man of sin, when he is revealed. Revelation chapter 12, you actually have Satan being kicked out of heaven, and he comes down to 
the earth. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Interesting, because Leviathan, you can go back to the book of Job, Leviathan, it says there, Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? It's going to be a fearful thing. And if you look at this Antichrist character that's coming, it's going to be very, very fearful. This guy is going to be the greatest world ruler that's ever showed up on the planet. No Pope, no Caesar, uh, Alexander the Great, or Genghis Khan, or, or, or any of them. King Nebuchadnezzar even. No ruler is going to compare to the Antichrist, to the man of sin. This guy is going to be Satan manifest in the flesh. Hmm. Again, you see Old Testament in the book of Job being confirmed by the New Testament. And it says there, Leviathan comes out of the sea. Revelation chapter 13, the beast comes out of the sea. The dragon comes out of the sea. Hmm. Job chapter 42. What happens if you make it the whole way through this thing? Job chapter 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job... When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and all that they, all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and they did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and at every one an earring of gold. Now I believe in type there again, the Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, comes through the thing, and the brethren and sisters and all the people and things, friends and, and all that, those are the Old Testament saints, Old Testament Jewish saints. Job will, be, Job will be one of those. And the New Testament saints, the body of Christ. And we're going to be there, and we're going to be there to comfort the Jews that make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Verse 12, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a 1,000 yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she-asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Karen Hapuk. And, and in all the land there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this, Job... After this lived Job an hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. That's what you have to look forward to if you are a Jew. If you watch this video, and you say, this guy is just nuts, he's a Gentile dog, and whatever else. If you don't listen to me right now, you miss the rapture. You're going to go into that time of Jacob's trouble. And if you can get through that thing, you will go into the Millennial Kingdom. But the only way you go into the, into the Millennial Kingdom is if you have not taken that mark and not worshipped the beast. And towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to do good works as well. Okay, there's a lot of things involved there. And I can't even give you all the instructions for that time period. There's going to be some really, really wild stuff that happens. I can't even fathom going through it. I praise the Lord that I'm saved, that I'm not going to go through it. And if you are watching this thing, and the rapture has not happened yet, there's been not been that thunder clap of God and the Christians, the true Christians being removed, if that has not happened, then you need to come to Jesus Christ as your Messiah. And you say, but my family, forget your family. You're going to have to forget your family. It's, it's a nonsensical thing that this, this modern church... Uh, mentality that most people have that you can just get along with everybody. Um, 
those of us who have been saved for a while can testify to the fact that our families, we don't get along with them. So even us, uh, we even have to turn against our own families many times to get saved. All right? Uh, there are very few true Bible-believing Christians that can say that they get along with everybody. I don't think I've ever even met one. Um, everybody in their family I'm talking about. Uh, most Bible-believing Christians have members of the family that don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. You better make up your mind. All right? It's either believe on Jesus Christ now or wait till after the rapture. Then you're going to get to see the proof, but then it's going to be really, really, really tough. And you're going to get to experience what Job went through. You're going to be living just like Job lived. It's going to be rough. So we'll close here with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, that if there are any Jews, Orthodox, or, or anybody that's a Jew watching this video, Lord, that they would not have to experience what Job went through. And, and it wasn't just... It was seven days and seven nights for Job, Lord. It's going to be seven years for a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble, Lord. And, and your word says that you're actually going to have to shorten the days so that some flesh could be saved. It's going to be the worst time period that this world has ever seen. And that's why I made this video, Lord, uh, to show any Jew out there that the Old Testament is confirmed by the New Testament. And the prophecies of the book of Job are futuristic events that have not happened yet and when they do happen it's going to be horrible it's going to be a nightmare so lord i pray that if there are any jews out there that have listened to this and they are convinced of it i pray lord that they would come to you as a sinner that they would put their faith in the blood of jesus christ that was shed on the cross as the only payment for their sins that they would call upon you lord and come to you and and, and ask for your salvation that you provide freely to anyone who asks I just pray for that, Lord, and uh, that they would be willing to live for you, uh, no matter what it costs them, Lord, it, understanding that it's going to cost them family members and people are going to turn against them, just like your word says, that they would throw caution to the wind, Lord, and, and not think to themselves, but, but I have to keep my family, and my, that they would realize that their soul is the most precious thing that they own, and that they need to get saved no matter what it costs. I just pray for that, Lord, and I ask that there would be no Jews that would have to go, that, that see this video, that would have to go into that horrible time period that's coming and experience even more of than what Job went through. And uh, Lord, if there are, for the Christians out there, I was going to say if there are, but I know that there are Christians that watch this, I just pray, Lord, for the Christians that, uh, that they would keep in mind that uh, we are not going to be here on this earth forever and and our life here is just temporary and that uh, as the old saying goes there's only one life will soon be passed only what's done for Christ will last that we would all be fervent Lord about working for you with the time that we have and I ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen all right that's it for this message we're here in the uh, ministry headquarters in Maine. I thought this would be kind of an appropriate setting here. One of the upstairs rooms, uh, the guy decided to take the plaster off and just left the old lath there. And I thought it would be kind of an appropriate setting for a sermon on the time of Jacob's trouble because, you know, it's going to be a lot of buildings that are kind of blasted out and, and uh, look very much like this. It's going to be a bad time. But... Um, I said I was going to do a sermon on this subject, on the book of Job, how it relates to a, a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. So, there you have it. Um, please keep praying for the ministry. Uh, a lot of really neat subjects coming up, uh, neat sermon ideas and things. And uh, So stay tuned, and we will continue to work for the Lord and, and uh, right up until the rapture. And I pray you do the same. Thank you for watching.